Um, I really want to thank you again for, for enjoying the Facebook Lives. I'm doing them because I, I see the feedback. I really wanted to cover vision and vision and CVI in particular. Um, I really thought this was not only a good topic, but I, I want to bring a bit more awareness to the functions of big vision to begin with. Um, when you're working with a child, right, we, we all have a neutral zone. So one of the first things that happens with vision, and this is stuff that you're going to learn in segment two, is there's a neutral zone within the eyes, and I believe that they lie within the eye filaments. This is where I always like to show the slow-mo guys of the eyes vision. But a child is not meant to see in the first days of life. And, and between that and, and infants have a different mucosal rate, so their mucus is thinner. So as a baby is doing all this tummy time as well as on their backs, right, they're getting the vestibular input of the eyes, all the filaments countering, and the nasal filaments. Now I really firmly believe that this is significant because I can guarantee you they can predetermine Alzheimer's just based off of the lack of counter response within the filaments of the eyes, right? So when that is going on, a neutralness comes in. And so when a baby starts responding to stimuli, this is movement for babies. They respond to stimuli. Whether it's the fan, it's the, the light, the this, the noise, your face, they are responding and there needs to be a neutralness. Neutralness with just within the eyes, right, and in the body. It is within all those fine dynamics, right, when infants are young, that we can start seeing complications start to occur within a child. It is that simple, that clear. And this is why a lot of people get confused, and the reason I'm speaking about this, is they, they assume that, again, a lot like cerebral palsy, that there has to be the damage or somewhere within an MRI to cause CVI. Now, Part of my flights or my quest is my, my own personal needs, right? Now, I had a son that contracted Amopolis influenza at 13 months, and it was not detected until he was four years old. Massive sinus infection, significant panacinitis, we've been sepsis, we've been preceptal cellulitis, we've done it. Granuloma annular, so that's HIV lesions, that's how much his autoimmune failure was. My son's, quote, MRI is fine. So how do I have a son that can't walk or talk and is globally delayed based off of a facial infection? Why is my son legally blind with a CVI of two to three from a facial infection? So when you're looking at the dynamics of move, movement, so what happened to my son? His mucus was so thick, the eye nasal dynamics is just gotten all thrown, okay? If your child is severely constipated, right? Your eye pelvic dynamics gets thrown. If your child has um, a muscular contraction, right? That's how movement starts to come into play. So it's not that I don't deal with diagnoses. I'm taking diagnoses to a next level. Again, this is one of the things you should have covered in your boot camp. Diagnosis is there for you to medically talk to your child and medically help your child in with your doctor, right? So when they said my son had autism, okay, yes he did, but my son had amophilus influenza, right? So the medical component was not there for years. Now when I tell doctors that he had amophilus influenza for three years and he's polysaccharide AB deficient, they look at me like I've got three heads. And I'm like, ask UCSD National Jewish, right? That's just personal stuff. But I want you to understand, I have a child with CVI, I have a child that has his vision issues, right? He's now 17. His CVI is a 10, he's a black belt, and he's on student council. So he still has full-blown autism, but he's not on an IEP, and he, he functions as he does, right? So, so the dynamics of working with vision. So cortical visual impairment is a processing disorder. To me, a definition of a processing disorder, it's like if I say, your shirt is green, right? And you're telling me, and you go, no, my shirt is turquoise, right? That is a processing. So the information that you have and what you concur as a turquoise, someone else might see as a green, right? That's a simple version of a processing disorder, 
right? You also can have a neurological influence, uh, uh, Dandy Walker syndrome, uh, corpus callosum, we can go on and on where there's been a PBL3, something to that effect, um, a small brain stem, anything like that can come into play and cause, again, the, the, by the time a body or the eyes and the baby is experiencing a ball, they don't see a ball and say, Mama, I want that red thing over there, you know, they, they experience, right? It's, it's not red, it's not a ball, they're just responding, and then it's like, ooh, cool, no ends, you know what I mean? And they, they just start playing with it. That's what you hope to happen. Um, with some forms of CVI, I might see it, oh, that's too much. Okay? Uh, oh, and then, then your goal is for at least a couple of moments where you've got that scanning going on, and then, oh, to, to acknowledge it, um, and, and that again, you're, you're allowing the processing of the neurological system to happen, right? Now, if you have a processing disorder just because, again, my son had a massive infection where some days the eyes worked and some days the eyes didn't. So today he sees the ball and then again, this is one of the qualities of CDI. Tomorrow, I have no idea what that is. Out of sight, out of mind. You know what I mean? And, and this is where you want to keep t one to three toys, very familiar toys. These are the toys that they've had at birth or, or very early on in their crib. It might be boring for you, but you want to introduce and maintain until they really can say, wow, this is a ball, right? Um, or until they really can go on, that's when they can go on to other things. I am not a big fan of, and, and please don't shoot the messenger, just because a child has CVI at a level one to two, let's say, black room, bright lights, um, and it looks like a discotheque. Um, the reason I don't like those kind of in sensory environments is, as you might say too, uh, first of all, there's no depth perception. Second, second of all, a lot of the, the quote toys that are being offered, you might get a visual stimuli, it's not functional. Right? Movement lesson is about functional, and especially functional vision. Right? You want the child to actually say eventually, okay, won't be today, maybe won't be tomorrow, but they're getting the input that that might be a ball, that might be a horse, or that might be red, let's say. Right? Those are more functional, I can do something with it. Now the best visual and fine and gross motor skills are cause and effect. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big more than words fan, uh, Kate uh, Fern Sussman, um, of in out cause and effect, open close. Who cares if it's a blue door if you've got CVA, CVI? Who cares that it's a door, right? But open, wow! I can open. I'm gonna wait for my 15 seconds. Open. Open. Door, you know. Then I can maybe. Uh, but do you want to go outside? Oh my gosh, it's just a nice day. Oh, the sky is blue, those birds are chirping. That is where, again, you might have that CVI, Claudia's laughing at me. I can say the good Southern accent if you want to, and really, no, I'm going for it. So you want to offer the vision a chance to process. Now with your child, that might be with auditory. You'd be very surprised, and this is the hardest thing about vision, how you are adding in an auditory response and your child might be responding to the snap and you go, oh, my child sees when it's, it's just the noise. Now, true visually impaired noise, if this snaps, I go here, because guess what, I'm missing it. But that looks like CVI. Oh, I can't look at this because again, I'm hearing. I want my ears to be the closest, right? If my eyes don't work well and I'm here, See, now I don't hear as well, and I'll put my ears up. So things like that might mimic CVI. But also on the other spectrum, some people think lots of times that a child is autistic when it really is a CVI, or that's the most dominant thing that you work with. Now, however, um, oh, also too, black and white, please. Um, I've touched on this before, but I always have to assume that you're new here, and thank you for being here. Black and white is for a very, very, very immature vision. Meaning that, that they're very, just the response is what you need of the eyes drawing to an object. 
but the drawing to an object is the key. When you're using black and white to an immature system, they cannot look away, right? So they're there, it's sort of like just looking uh, a moth looking at a bright light. Um, it's not functional. A lot of it is like zigzaggy lines or a cross. Um, and you want, if you're going to use black and white, and again, we're, we're talking immature, uh, physically immature, not so much, again, cognitively, uh, and, and a visually immature system, right? If they've got severe, even more so, let's say optic nerve hyperplasia. That's where you might bring in, again, just to stimulate and get that little bit of crossing midline, and then you're gonna wanna go up to something a little bit more advanced. Um, you want to go very slow is what you need to do. But the first thing you really need to make sure, and this is the deficit that I think that people make with CVI, you have to make sure you have binocular vision, okay? What does that mean? The eyes need to work together to see, okay? We have two eyes, right? But when I'm looking at you, my eyes, what's called converge, and they'll converge at my camera. So I'm not even looking at someone in the face right now, I'm seeing a little dot that I have to talk to, right? But again, I'm an adult, I can handle that. But they converge and they go to a center. Now again, if my eyes did not converge, even though I'm looking at you, and this is where I always want to see a vision video, now my eyes are doing this. Now I don't know if you all can pick it up right now, um, I can't see you, right? I know that there's lights in front of me and as possibly a stand. Now, if I didn't know what that was, if someone just brought, now I can see you again. If someone brought me into this room, right? I wouldn't see a stair with uh, a chair with a stand on it. If I just came in here, I I'm just seeing a hot mess, right? Um, you have to know the range of the binocular vision. So let's say I now have a, a, a cross eye, right? Where, where the eye's coming in. My, or there, this is right here is where I can see the single object. Not here, I see two hands. Here I see one. Because my eye is coming in, this is my convergence field. Now if I have the same visual preference and I'm here, now I've got like five hands. So if you're in an apartment and you've got a two bedroom hallway and a child does not have binocular vision, um, they have issues with depth perception because partly because they're seeing about eight doors, right? Let's just say. Um, so this is where you have to look at, do they have binocular vision? Yes or no, and to what level they have it. Right now I have binocular vision, but when I get tired, right? Now I don't have binocular vision. This is not when you're gonna be offering the vision therapy, right? And now the other thing I was talking about again was a convergence. Well, I might have convergence just like this, and I have to sit here like this, and this is about as far as I can do my convergence. Now, if my little sister was running over here, right, guess what? I can't do this. What's this? Yes, cross midline, socially attention, all of that. But what it, what it is, is again, and this is where you have to have someone good on your team, where you have to start helping your child through what I'm trying to offer with movement lesson is to help your child, the convergence, what I call passive and active convergence, where I'm actively converging here, but then I go passive with my convergence, and then I converge and I can see, let's say my sister or the dog run by, right? Another way of looking at active and passive convergence, if I was putting up a flashcard here, let's say, and then a flashcard here. Don't expect you to read it, but I'm looking for you to be able to focus here and then focus here, right? Eventually you'll get to here and 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 to here, right? You know, that's what a baseball player has to do, right? This is why I always brag, let's say, about Felipe's vision because he was a professional pitcher. So when he's throwing that ball to pitch, he's got to see who's stealing first, second, and third. And let me tell you what the outfielders are doing. And if you don't think he can do that, he, he's got... He has peripheral vision like back to here. I'm like about here, right? But he's, and it's funny because I'll just once in a while do this and he just, he, he can just, he can just pick it up. Um, but he's been doing ball since he was four years old. So again, he's developed skill over his lifetime. Did he even know he had it? No, it was a natural talent. But that doesn't mean we can't offer it to our child, right? So what happens is with this binocular vision and convergence, and what you're seeing is CVI. 
Well, if I have, let's say, uh, esotropia, the eyes coming in, first of all, I'm not seeing this. I need to be maybe more here with the central vision. And then, so my, my CVI might be more here. So what am I trying to say? If you have CVI, and this is where I'm at when I say what is a visual diagnosis, I'm looking for what's going on. I need to know structure. I'm not a doctor. Uh, I, I, I can't. Um, do that kind of, I can't check for acuity. However, if you're telling me two, I have a two and a half on this eye and a 175 on this eye, I have two visions. So just my visual acuity, I'm not going to get binocular vision or convergence without glasses, right? So when they say, oh, child's too young for glasses, well, if I'm at two and a half and 175, so look again, look at the range of my vision, and now I'm trying to this is where you see someone not crossing midline. And that's where I start picking up the child's got a vision issue, right? And so I get it. Yes, you're correct, not crossing midline. When you're finding the reasons why someone's not crossing that midline, why they're going into CVI, that's where you get the gold. If you really want to help your child, go for gold, right? Don't say I added in tomatoes and some garlic, right, and put it on some pasta and I've got spaghetti. You know what I mean? An Italian would be like, what? And I'm, I'm Italian, so hopefully I can say that. Um, we're getting a little politically correct, but anyway. You know what I mean? Like, like, or when I make a salsa, my girlfriend's like, that's marinara. You know, because I, I can't, like, buy, no spice. <laughs> so she just laughs at me because it's peppers and onions and tomatoes and it's marinara as far as she's concerned. So again, it's, it's who's making it. And if you don't make it like grandma, those kind of conversations make sense to us. This is why I pull these stories. But when you're working with someone's vision, your child's vision, if you want the success, right? First of all, the CVI is there. So I get it. You have a processing disorder. But it's a processing disorder of what level? It can be classic CVI. But as you can see, when you start adding in cerebral palsy, a little bit of SMA, you know what I mean, um, and so on and so forth, you that's where you're going to get, what do I need to help my child, right? So to say that I'm a, the grandma's in a stage two to three, that part I understood. He has a very low level vision, right? But he had no convergence, right? So uh, asking him to do a pincer grip. Say, if you don't have convergence, you're not going to get a pincer grip, right? That to me is a very easy solution. Most people are like, what does a pincer grip have to do with division? So that's when people ask me certain questions. How do I get my child to crawl? He's only doing this. Um, I can, I can, again, I'm your troubleshooter. I'm looking, but I want to teach you, right? I'm, I'm good, and that's why you're coming here. But at the same time, I'm really good if I help you help your child. Right? That's, that's why you're here. You want me to help your child. So we really need to start looking at what we can do to add to these solutions to help your child. So if your child has a processing disorder, which is cortical visual impairment, CVI, why? Okay, in your child's case, it might be because they're colorblind. So, so part of the therapy, the home program that you want to offer your child and when I say home program, when people say, oh, how many hours should I work with this? It's again, it's offering the tool for your family life. You can be doing vision therapy when you're at the supper table. So it's not about sitting down. Um, if you're at the supper table, you're going to want to like uh, uh, lessen the visual complexities. So in your child's case, you might want everybody having brown plates on a brown table, right? But your child's plate is red guess what? I'm going to see my plate that much better. It might seem like an easy, simple solution, but if you've never thought about that before, you might want to dish out the food from the kitchen counter because if you've got all this going on and cups and this and that and, and a couple bowls, a big pitcher with the flowers on them, now you've got the mashed potatoes and now you've got the turkey over here. That uh, Right now, because of the way my son, too, you, now you're nauseous. He's throwing up. Right? It, it, that's seasick to him. There's way too many smells going on for his level of CVIs, way too much visual complexity, and, and, and he's just, and that's it. And this is why part of the reason my son has, I believe, has an eating disorder. 
partly because of the sinus infection, but again, the way his vision was processing, I had no, I, I, you know, I just didn't pick up on these clues. And hopefully I've gone through enough, and with all the clients I've been through, this is what I'm compiling with, what I can do to help you specifically. So these are the things you might want to look at with your child. I'm not saying paint the floors and the walls black, right? Again, there's no depth perception. There's, there's no um, functional vision with that. Um, but you want to look at the, the visual complexity is your number one thing, right? That works for your child. The second thing you want to look at, it's got to be, does your child have binocular vision, okay? And then, do they have binocular vision and convergence? Now, true convergence, by the way, is where I can take something and go in and go back out again, right? People will think of the converse, converting in, right? But they're not thinking about convert. See, just me doing this to you, right? My conversion is going out. If I want to write on my piece of paper and look at my teacher and come back again, that, that's, that's a reverse convergence, right? You want being able to go in and out. So these are the things you could look at. If your child can't come in with an object, and you can easy test, throw a ball, you know, um, then we can go into, oh, not only can my child not catch the ball, but they don't have a quadra vision. Those are the things that you can start looking at or we need. And I'm not saying if your child can't catch the ball. Now, typically, if you were working with me, and let's say I couldn't catch the ball, then you would practice with me. Throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. This is also where you can't use adult techniques on a child, especially an infant. If a child can't do something, if a child prefers not to do something, if they have sensory integration or what you're seeing is those things, how I read their bodies is, listen, I don't know what you're trying to do to me, but I'm not having it, right? It's a very defensive, not flight or flight. This is different. Right? This is a logical move for them that they want to stabilize their system. Not run away from you. They want to stabilize their system. Now, as they get older, they might learn, hey, the only thing I can do right now is run into my room because you're not listening. I've given you enough clues how I need to be to stabilize my system. And that doesn't mean to cater to them, but when they're off like that, so if, if a child can't throw the ball, you're not going to turn around and keep throwing the ball. Right? Because... The first thing you have to do with vision, and, um, and I'm, this is, if it's all you're getting from this talk is this, for your child to be successful, that first visual thing that they've never done before, it's better be successful. So if you're working on convergence, right, don't do it like, oh, 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 they're not a trombone, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a competition, oh, can you go, oh, oh, look, 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 stop. If all you're doing is this to this, wow. That was successful convergence. You might not be able to go back to it for two days. And then, wow, success, boom. Oh, you know, you got you, you can have your phone in your hand, your little fingernails, they love your face, lipstick. Guys, get it out, red lipstick. It's something that they can focus on. Um, that's, if, if they realize, wow, I can see you today. Oh, I can start seeing you tomorrow. That's where you're going to start to have progressive vision. You want success. Please don't overload them. These are tricks and tips to help you. Don't do it at 9 o'clock at night. They're tired. You're tired. Um, I like to say a lot, you know, if, if, I, if you want, and, and I'm not married, so I shouldn't say these things, but it, it, it probably, if I listened to my own advice, maybe I would be. But um, let's say you want a new couch. You don't start on Friday night when, when, when your, your spouse is like dead tired. Oh, I saw this great couch. It's going to cost $5,000. You're not winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? You wait till Sunday. Oh, you feed him a great breakfast. Oh, so sorry. You can't re relax watching that game. But, you know, I wish the couch was more comfortable. Then it's their idea. Then you get your couch. You know what I mean? So, so it's the same thing, especially with vision. You really want it to be successful. Um... And, and I hope you really understand vision and processing. It is cortical visual impairment, but right now either some people are really giving away the diagnosis or they're still, if they don't see the brain damage, they're not giving it, right? A lot like cerebral palsy. Um, I've had spastic quad cerebral palsy with no brain trauma. So it's, it's not always 100% that case. So it's the same thing with cortical visual impairment. My son's MRI is fine, but I've got, you know, uh, I'm here for a reason. 
So when you're looking at that, where is the processing break, breaking down? That is the, really the ticket. If you're not sure, post your videos on the group. Uh, again, I can only do so much um, when I'm far away like this. Uh, one of the things I'm working on is the cognitive vision course. It's coming out. Um, I'm shooting for the end of May now. It's, 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 a, it's a huge, extensive course. And let me tell you, you will have what the right eye is doing and what the left eye is doing and how to do both of them in between um, with, my, with my cognitive vision. Um, training is coming up this Sunday. Um, I really can't thank you enough for being in the boot camp. You, oh, sorry, training is coming up next Sunday, the 10th. Um, please, I can't thank you enough for being in the boot camp. If a boot camp is still something you haven't played with, you've got two days left. Um, and uh, I'm really excited, but there's talks about putting the boot camp also into Russian. Please don't jump on me. It's not going to happen by tomorrow. Translation takes a bit. If you want it done quicker, help. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, and um, Vietnamese. So, uh, and we have boot camps in Spanish. So we are doing what we can to help you, okay, to help us. You know, the, the videos are there. The, the education is there. We're, we're, we're offering this service is to help you. Um, and please, take advantage of it, right? This is what you need right now. Um, services are cut. They will be continue to be cut now for, for some time. And um, we, we need to jump on board. It might may not be something that you were planning on, but this is just where it's at. And uh, hopefully I'm giving you the tools to help you. And um, I'm looking forward to, to next week's topic. Still not sure what it is that, uh, yet. So uh, if you want to know, put, put your suggestions down. And I will, oh, Facebook Live for the video reviews is going to be on Monday because we've got a lot of videos in. And did I have anything you need to address? No mm -hmm. questions? No okay, questions. Guys, have a great weekend. Can't thank you enough. And I'll see you.